This is the official podcast for the Adelaide Football Club. G'day Crows fans, here we are with the round 9 edition of the Down the Guts podcast. Paddy Dangerfield's here on the back of the 69 point win over Carlton. Welcome mate. Great to be here Jock, very exciting time at the club at the moment. Up and about. Certainly not getting are. too carried away. Welcome, Kat. Thank you. How are you? I'm no, well, not, lid is on, Kat. The lid is on. Lid's not off yet. <laughs> I'm keeping a lid on it, Jock. But in all seriousness, mate, fan, must be fantastic to get a, a win over in Melbourne, crucially after um, losing the last 15, I think it was, on the trot. Well, uh, after last week when Kat brought up the statistic, we had won there in... 40 years. <laughs> um, before it was built. <laughs> you know, before before the club was in the AFL. <laughs> um, yeah, it's certainly pleasing to, to get a win over there and to do it against a very good opposition was uh, doubly pleasing. And then triply pleasing was to do it, uh, you know, was to play the footy we played and to win by... 50-odd points, 60-odd points. Now, how are the ribs, mate? Because there was a big contest where you and Mark Murphy going hammer and tongs, <laughs> and it looks like he's come off worse. I mean, uh, condolences to Mark if you're listening, but um, yeah, yeah, t- run us through that one. Yeah, it was obviously disappointing to see uh, Nick out for 12 weeks or so, but, um, yeah, it was sort of one of those... Um, contests you don't really think too much about. You just see the ball, and you've got to put your body... Um, on top of it basically to try to try and trap it and that's what I was trying to do and unfortunately we collided and a little bit sore at the moment Jock <laughs> where'd you go was it the hip or the ribs uh ribs yeah. yeah, so. And a few of your teammates. They feel, they feel great today. <laughs> I saw a few of your teammates sort of rubbing them, just trying to help you out there. Right, I was just warming them, warming them up for training uh, today, which was great. Probably so. not what you want after you just collected right, a thanks, shoulder. Thanks, Brent. <laughs> Jock, now, we had him in last week, and I don't want to say it was the People's Podcast. It's got. Uh, <laughs> Because I have a different name for our podcast. It's not Down the Guns to me. Down, to not me, Down the to Guns. Me, to me, it's still the People's Podcast. So who are we Phil's talking just up? not here anymore. <laughs> We're talking of Josh Jenkins, who was here last week, and he obviously played a very good game on the weekend. And his head is enormous now. I can't believe he got into training this morning. He had to come through the shed. Because <laughs> that's how big it is at the moment. But the big fella had a terrific game, Cat, And... Uh, some special highlights for the weekend. It certainly did. Not only the left hand, right hand bounce <laughs> combination, but also the left hand, a left foot, right foot goal combination mm. as well. The left foot gem from the boundary line, and then just the running. I thought it, I right. thought it was Byron Pickett in the 2004 <laughs> final running down the middle of the ground, taking left handed, right handed bounces. But it was a 200 centimetre forward come Ruckman that was doing it, which was very impressive. So he's pretty quick though, Josh. He is. He's super quick. What people don't realise. Well, I suppose they'll start to realise now that his uh, 20 minute um, time is terrific. It's under under three seconds, which is very impressive for a midfield, let alone a 200 centimetre ruckman. Yes, and um, I think Josh is he's a font. He's become fond of the the podcast and actually requesting. Oh, this one he thinks he's Mike Sheen. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll put it out there. He thinks he's Mike Sheen with a, maybe a little touch of Craig Hutchinson. <laughs> like he is just out of control at the moment, Jock. I think you need to have a chat to him. Yeah, I think we just had to have a little chat and say, not this week, Josh. We'll get you it's on true. another week. But I think we've got Jared Petrenko coming in today, so we'll have yes, a good chat the pup to him. is in. Been in terrific form as well, Jared. Been very good. But we won't talk about it now because he's in a little bit later. Very good. And uh, Danger, you're, you just keep going with the Dream Team scores, mate. Another 142. Do you have a team and are you playing in your own midfield? <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually have a team. This is the first time in about five years I haven't had a side because basically the last five years after round one, I get bored and I never look at it again. Yeah. So I'm still in Blighty's team, though, in the super coach. <laughs> so, you know, thanks, Blighty. Mm. Appreciate it. This week, uh, Collingwood in front of hopefully a, a packed Amy Stadium crowd. What are you expecting? Well, surely it has to be Jock. Thanks. I think ticket sales we're almost sold out. So. Seven and one. Surely, I reckon we can get fifty thousand this week. He's put it out there. Come on, people. Well, Sando spoke about it, at Cat, and I think uh, you know it's a great opportunity. It's a Saturday night, perfect time, Cat. No excuses. The weather. 7, I don't know what the forecast is, but I'll make mine up. It's going to be twenty and fine. fine. <laughs> so don't worry about anything you hear from Brenton Raglis or anyone else. <laughs> and uh, what are the pies going to bring, mate? Yeah, I think, well, obviously they'll have, a, they'll have a few new inclusions with Reed and, and Swan obviously out. So I'd say they'll have a few, uh, I suppose, lesser tried players come through their midfield. Uh, I think 
maybe uh, Sidebottom, who's played on the wing and been in very good form. He might spend a little bit more time through the midfield. Yep. Uh, the same with maybe Sherrod Wellingham, who's played a bit at half forward. I think he might spend a little bit more more time through the midfield as well. So I think that's that's what will happen in terms of um, personnel in the midfield. Uh, down back, it'll be interesting because obviously we've got some we've got some tall targets down there. So maybe Maxwell might might uh, take one of the big tools, I reckon. Will you look to exploit him there? Because obviously uh, Ben Reid's out as well. So is that, is that an area you think you can get an advantage? Yeah, I reckon it is. I think uh, I, I think regardless of the, the teams that we play, with the forward power that we've got, obviously Taylor Walker's not playing, but if we can get in there quickly to tip 0-1-1, one one, he's very difficult to beat. So, you know, that's, it's our plan every week. And it, it's, you know, we don't hide it because opposition teams would certainly know it. If we can get it to him one-on-one, -on -one, he's a very, very hard player to read. And obviously we've got our small forwards and Ian Callan, who's been in terrific form, Joe Petrenko, who we've spoken about, um, you know, who are doing terrific things in the forward line. So I think our forward line is functioning really well at the moment. And, you know, something that, you know, we like to, to think is pretty feared within the AFL and hopefully we can bring that uh, Saturday night. You touched on the crowd, Paddy. Two-part question. What's the biggest crowd that you've played in front of and how much difference does it make to the players running out onto Amy when you've got, you know, 45,000 people there? Oh, it's massive, Kat. And a couple of weeks ago we played in front of a really good-sized crowd and it's just the buzz that you get from playing in, in front of a huge crowd every time you, you know, make a good tackle or a spoil or you kick a goal, the crowd just absolutely erupts. So it's, it's massive for us and I really do think it, it improves our performance. Uh, in terms of crowds that I've played in front of, I reckon it was the 2009 final against Collingwood. I played yep. in front of about 65 or 70,000, and then after that, um, I reckon we played in front of 55 when I went over to Ireland um, to play in the international series, and that was a that was a buzz as well. So, um, you know, they're probably my two biggest crowds that I've played in front of. So, if we could get 50,000 this week, um, it'd be terrific, and you know, I'm sure the boys will perform in front of a, a packed sellout crowd. Now we're seven and one. Have you started to notice that opposition teams are, are really looking into the way that we're playing? Uh, I mean, we saw um, Brent Riley was tagged on the weekend. That's probably something he hasn't had to deal with. And you're also, un you're unlucky if you're getting tagged <laughs> Mark back, aren't you? <laughs> and Jared Petrenko as well. Yeah. So is that is that something that other sides are really looking into the way that we're playing and sort of changing things up? I guess. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, well, you know, we do it ourselves. We look into every side that we play, and obviously, as the season goes goes on, you get more information about the way that sides are playing. Uh, Collingwood are no different. Obviously, they're playing under a different coach this year compared to, uh, to compared to Mick Malthouse, and they've changed um, you know subtle things in their game style. So, you know, we've we've looked over those, and we'll look to exploit them where we can. But the longer you play, the obviously more information that you gain on your opposition. So the more you can analyse them and try and pick weaknesses out of them. All right, I think it's time to launch into our regular segment, which is Ask Danger, where you the send Twitter. us some Twitter love, questions. Love the tweeting and the Twitter cat, you know that. There is some interesting... Yeah, a couple of good ones this week, so I think. Do you want to kick us off, Joe? We will. Now, Danger, off the top from Annalise Andrews. When you check your phone and have texts from Tex Walker, Sam Jacobs and Sando AFC, who would you call? text and ignore <laughs> so firstly out of the three sando tex and big source who are you going to call text and ignore oh you call sando <laughs> right back <Yeah. laughs> oh yeah there's no, no coach there's no ignoring of the coach unless it's maybe uh in regards to selection and <laughs> so oh, just throw, the, throw the phone out and say listen sando I broke my phone, accidentally threw it in front of a bus and wasn't able to realise that I'm not on the side, so I'm playing this weekend. <laughs> uh, so who are you going to text? Who I text? Oh, it's a hard one. I would never... Saucy, huge amount of respect for the big fella. He, you know, he dishes it down to us midfielders, so you, you can't ignore him. But Taylor Walker sends some of the funniest messages <laughs> you're ever likely to receive, so... Pretty it, sure if you ignored Tex, it wouldn't stop at one. Well, that's the thing. If you ignore him, then you're going to get ten. And if you ignore the next ten, we'll just keep going. And it'll go all night. So, certainly I wouldn't ignore Tex, and I wouldn't ignore Sauce, because he's the one hitting it to me, so... I'm a very friendly person. I would always say that. <laughs> now, we've got one from Eddie White. As much as I, I say that, but I'm also horrific sometimes at texting back. Keep that in My mind. My friends back in Victoria would realise that I'm horrific. Just a busy man. Don't text during the day. <laughs> text at night and I'll always text back. Good to know. 
Eddie White. Now, this is interesting because I'm not sure if you were watching AFL 360 last night, but Mark Robbo Robinson decided that you were the Kevin Durant of the AFL. So this one is oh, interesting. <laughs> just, <laughs> just paid, probably. I was going to say, Kevin Durant's on about $30 million That's, a year. That, they led into that conversation. Oh. <laughs> probably earns about $8 million more than Patrick Dangerfield. But uh, yep. if you could snare one elite athlete from any sport in the world and convert them into an AFL player for the Crows, of course, who would it be? Oh, LeBron James. Love the Miami Heat, Cat, And oh, LeBron at 203 and 113 kilos. Reckon he'd be handy in an AFL side. Oh, he'd be okay. <laughs> you know, you could, you could keep him deep. He'd be phenomenal, I reckon. He's... You wouldn't risk him in the ruck? No. Would, Although, he, would he be sauce in the ruck? Well, he'd probably jump over sauce, I reckon. I reckon he might. But do you go with him, or we'll say you go with him, but he doesn't really know the game. You could go with Yao Ming and just say, Yao, stand in the middle, see that ball that gets thrown up? I just want you to hit it to me. <laughs> Yao v. Sandalands. So, well, Yao's 10 centimetres tall in Sandalands. Imagine having him in the ruck. You'd probably go that, I reckon. How the umpire, maybe... could he get the ball up high enough well, at the bounce? Well, he'd probably have to kick it up, Cass. He would. <laughs> All right, well, maybe Kevin Durant. Well, I'm going to go with him because he's 7 foot tall. Yeah. Put him in the ruck. He's only 22. Plenty of time to learn the game. Come on, Kevin. We can pay you nowhere near what you're <laughs> on now. We can give you a free Camry, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got one here. This is an interesting one from Thomas Francis, and I might just extend on this. He's, he wants to know, do you sleep much? But I think maybe let's develop that into an AFL, as an AFL player, how important is sleep, and do you get a lot of it? Well, sleep is the number one priority after a game, Jock. Yep. Uh, obviously, along with recovery and, um, and your diet's also very important. But after a game, um, we're advised that you need at least eight hours of sleep, which I probably don't get because I struggle to sleep after a game. But uh, at the moment, I've been a little bit knackered from the weekend because I reckon I had about four hours sleep Sunday <laughs> night. So I've been sleeping about nine hours a night, which is something I'd love. I'd love more sleep, but there's plenty of time to sleep when you're dead. You hear the boys talk about it, recovery <laughs> the next day, not Who about said being that? dead. Someone said that. <laughs> the, captain of, the captain of the Black Pearl, Barbosa. Saturday night, 7-10 game. Pretty. What time would you get to sleep? 7-10 games, so when do we finish? In the room, it's 11 o'clock mm-hmm. after the game. Uh, recovery will take another hour, 12 o'clock. After you've been up to the shed, get home, whack some, uh, what are they called? Frozen chips in the oven. Yeah. That'll take... 40 minutes to get ready. Takes me through to about quarter to one. Tom comes over. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Lynch. Tom there. Lynch, yep. Uh, yeah, good point. He's already there. So <laughs> he comes over. Where are the chips? In the oven. Right out. Then we're whacking a movie. That'll take us through about 2.30, 3 o'clock. And then at that time, what are we watching now, Pat? Go home, Tom. <laughs> so Tom goes home and I try to go to sleep. And then, yeah, 3.30, probably... I, th- and I think you'll find most players at 2.30 to 3 o'clock after yeah. a night game because you just your mind is ticking over every single play um, that you're involved in and it's great when you play a good game because <laughs> when, you when, you, when you play a bad game it's just bad though because you're thinking oh I could have done this or should have done that um, so your mind ticks over it a million miles an hour now this one is another interesting one <laughs> uh, Ryan Felice Forgive me if I've pronounced that incorrectly. My Italian isn't great. Danger, what is your favourite cheese? Ah, oh, to take a line out of the shoot as a man. Amanda Bynes, great flick, Jock. Absolutely great okay. flick. Okay. Cuda. Cuda. Have you seen that flick, cat? I have seen it. I'm just... Change be a bloke. I'm a bit surprised that you've seen it. Ah. Oh, but you oh, do have a girlfriend. I do. You, she would drag you along to some of these things. No, she wasn't home when I rented it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Nikki Jager wants to know. Jager Amira, yep. I've moved from Adelaide to Ballarat and I get homesick. How do you deal with homesickness? Oh. Now, mate, oh. this is probably one That's that you're fond question. of. Yeah, it's tough. The first three months are very tough, Jock. I think you'll find any player, by the time you get to... Um, to January, that's the hardest month to deal with when you first move over. Yep. And I was talking to Crouch the other day, and I was, you know, I was asking him how he how he coped with it, and he said, "I don't know what you're talking about. I feel great. I'm really <laughs> enjoying it over here." And he was he was absolutely honest. He said, "I haven't been homesick once, yeah. maybe for a couple of days, and then I was fine." So, mm. you know, different people handle it differently. But um, I call mum and dad quite often, which is good. And uh, my girlfriend's moved over here now, so it's almost like we've got our own little life 
here at the moment. So you just got to wait it out, don't you, Kat? Just get on with life, I think. You do, exactly. Do what Crouchy does. Don't even worry about it. No, I'm fine. <laughs> don't worry about me. Lucky last. I'll be the best player next year. Crouch, <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> Kayla Vasalo, what do you like? Vasalo? Vasalo. You stay out of this this week. It's not your turn. All right. What do you love most about playing in front of a big crowd? Well, we touched on it before. Every time you go near the ball, you know, you make a really good tackle, you kick a goal, the team kicks a goal. The, just the eruption from the crowd and the cheering, um, it's fantastic. It really inspires you to, to you know, to want more of um, what's created that, that uproar, I suppose, in the crowd. So um, it's a fantastic feeling to play in front of big crowds and hopefully we can get that Saturday night. Now, while we're on this topic, celebrations. We've got a few guys in the team. Pup loves it. Josh Jenkins cramped during his oh. over the top celebration. You're not. Yenchi, Yenchi loves it. Loves oh, it. Yen- Yenchi restrained. practices his at training. That's if you come down and watch yep. the crows train, are they premeditated? You see a variety of different. Um, I have no doubt Matthew Yenchi's are. Pup, pup, you know he's got the he's, fingers, yeah. fingers twirling. Um, some people do. Yep. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah. Mm, not sure about it. Not Keep sure a lid on it. it. Yep. No, I'm not. A... Unless it's a really good one. Yeah, I don't get too excited when a kid so goes. What, what do you do after you kick the Stephen Hill goal? Just just the, yeah. the, oh, the Stephen. No, I, was, I had the double fist bump yeah. on that one. Yeah. I was pretty pumped with that one. Just get around we, me. We were struggling at the time, so. Yeah, get around me, boys. Tell me how good it was. <laughs> 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 no, normally it's just the. As Kat said before, just the one finger salute. Mm. Yep. So I'm Goodwin esque. Andrew McLeod had the one, but he had the. Yeah, he's pointing at the crowd. Pointing. Kick some very and Pup's good goals. merged them all and just got I know. Get away from me. He's like shooting everyone with fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Danger, you got to uh, make make tracks and head down to Westies. What are you doing there, mate? Yeah, just got to head off job. No, doing a little bit of work with the under 18s, and Jared Mears is the coach. She's actually very good friends with uh, Scotty Campriali, so. They're going very well, the boys. Last week, they uh, they knocked off the Red Legs under 18s who hadn't lost a game. So heading down there, which I'll do uh, as often as I can on a Wednesday. So What's your good. role, mate? Just doing the stoppages? or Yeah, help, help out with the midfielders. Running and, the power out? Yeah, running, running the drinks, you know, moving the, the bin ball around. And that's <laughs> about it. But no, nah, so I've got to head off down there. So No, nah, well, thanks for joining us, mate. All the best this weekend. Hopefully you have another good game and uh, in front of a big crowd. Beautiful. Good on you, guys. Cheers, mate. Well, Cap, we've got Joe Petrenko in here with us today, but Paddy's just, uh, he's probably dogged you, mate. He's hes off to Westies. He said, no, nah, I can't wait around for the for the pup to come in. So, um, welcome, mate. Yeah, thanks, guys, and thanks, Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> now, mate, how are you going? You enjoying your footy, loving your time out uh, out with the Crows and under Sando? Yeah, it's been great. Um, it's uh, always good when you're winning games, and um, I think... My, uh, my winning record at the club's only oh, be probably about 20%, 25%. So um, to win some games this year compared to the last couple of years, it's been real good fun. Now we've got the Pies on Saturday night. Your first game, of course, was against Collingwood at the G Round 1 2009. I think Tex Walker made his debut in that game too and Mike Cook too, who's not yep. at the club anymore. But what are your memories of that game? It was a pretty special win and also the last time that we've beaten the Pies. Yeah, it was an amazing day. It was probably one of the best days of my life. Um, you know, to play at the MCG, which you know every kid dreams of. And um, I remember Taylor kicking a goal off his uh, first kick, pretty uh, pretty good goal. And um, I remember Andrew McLeod kicking me the ball, and I kicked my first goal. So I still thank him for that. Uh, but yeah, we uh, it was a tough game. We ended up grinding at it and winning by four points. So. Uh, it'd be good to have another win this weekend, and mate. How are you how are you seeing your role um, playing sort of a defensive forward role, cutting out some of the the dangerous opposition for uh, defenders? But are you sort of starting to win your own goal and get more attacking the forward line? Yeah, it's um it's been good. I've obviously had a couple of roles on people like Hamish Hartlett and and Corey Enright, and uh, they're all great players, and um, you know some players that I've looked up to as well. So. It's a good experience for me, and uh, I'm adding the uh, the attacking side of my game now as well, and getting a couple of goals, which is which is pretty rewarding. So um, I'm loving the role, and uh, keeps getting me in the game, which is good. 
Yeah, it sounds like opposition clubs are starting to pick up on that because you had, I think, Dennis Arnfield come to you on Sunday. How did you find that, actually, having someone trying to stop you <laughs> for a change? Yeah, I haven't had that for a, for a long time. So, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough. I didn't have the greatest game on the weekend, but, um, yeah, it's... Uh, pretty flattering actually and uh, hopefully they don't do it too, mu- too much more because I like getting the ball and he <laughs> did pretty well so um, yeah I'll, I'll just get back to playing my role this week and, and hopefully get a kick. And how you been pulling up after games mate because I think the fans and also media observers would think you're Cannonball. probably going in as hard as anyone in the competition mm-hmm. so do you pull ups all with plenty of knocks? Um, yeah I, I think Actually, as funny as it is, I, I'm a probably sorest this week after than I have been for a long time, and uh, I think that's just to do with the uh, what is it, Eddie had the stadium, surface, the yeah. surface out. But um, yeah, I think all the boys are copying these knocks uh, this year. As we can see, it's a real contested style of footy we're playing, and um, yeah, it's a uh, it's good fun to be a part of. Well, mate, all the best on the weekend and uh, hopefully you can snag a few more goals and get the four points. Yeah, that'd be nice. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the official podcast of the Adelaide Football Club. 